Okay, hi Eli, so I'm just going to go over those questions that you sent me. Um, oh, and actually, I just want to be able to pull them over here, so I'm just going to do that a second. All right, so the first question you had was question number five here. And this one is a little bit weird because, so they tell you to sketch the graph of the function um, 5x squared minus 30x plus 55 on the grid provided. And they give you a grid that doesn't actually fit the proper graph. And even if you look in the answer key, it shows something different. So I don't know why they told you to graph it on that grid. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what threw you off, but um, I'll still just show you the basic steps of what you would want to do to answer this question in case that wasn't what threw you off. So to start out with, we have, um, I'm just going to write it as y equals 5x squared minus 30x um, plus 55. So you can start out by factoring out the common value in all of these, which is 5. So then that's going to have y equals 5x squared minus 6x plus 11. Um, and then here it gets a little bit tricky because there isn't really a number that multiplies to 11 and adds to negative 6. So what I would do is factor out the x there. So we're going to have y equals 5 and then it's going to be x. And if you take the x out of these two here, um, you're going to have x minus 6 and then plus 11 is still on the outside. And so it kind of shows you this at the beginning of the workbook, this method of doing things, um, because basically then what you can do is say, um, in order to make this component equal to zero, uh, x could either equal zero, right, if you were multiplying through, or x could equal um, positive six. If you did six minus six, that would also um, equate to zero. And then we still have the, in the original function, we were given the um, y value for these x components. So it's going to be x equals 0 um, when y equals 55 and x equals 6 when y equals 55. Um, okay, so then the next thing we need to do is to look for our um, axis of symmetry. So we can just use our formula for that where we're going to use the two zeros, x equals 0 and x equals 6, add them together, divide by 2, and that is going to give us 6 over 2, which is 3. So now we know that our um, axis of symmetry is at 3. And let me think here, what else did we need to do? Um, so if you're going to sketch your graph, we should start out with that. So we know that we have when x is 0, y is equal to 55. I'm trying to think of where I actually drew this graph. but OK, x equals 0, y equals 55. So let's just make that a point, 0, 55. And when x equals 6, y equals 55. So 6, 55. So there we go. Um, and then our axis of symmetry is going to be 3, which makes sense because if we're on um, this y value here of 55 and we go from 0 to 6, then halfway in between there would be 3. So we're going to have kind of this kind of a line going through our graph, which will be our symmetry, x equals 3. Um, let's see, and then the only other thing we needed to figure out was the vertex. So in order to solve for the vertex, we know that it's going to have to be on the axis of symmetry. So our x value will be 3. And so we can basically plug that into our original equation. So it's going to be our y value will be equal to 5 times by x squared. So 5 times by 3 squared will be 9 minus 30 times by our x value of 3 plus 55. 
And so we end up with um, 45 minus 90 plus 55, which should give us um, 10. Okay, and so um, let's see. That's going to be our vertex is going to be at x equals 3 and y equals 10. So I don't know, maybe kind of like somewhere around here might be 10, and we're going to be on our axis. So 3 comma 10. So now we know that we're not actually going to touch that x-axis, and our parabola is going to open up because we had the positive a value up here, the 5. Okay, so obviously this is not the very best drawing, but that's generally kind of what we're looking at in terms of shape and the different points on the graph. So that was question 5. Um, so this is uh, workbook 6.3 for 20-2. And let's see, your next question was number seven, so let's find that. So number seven asks you to determine the quadratic function that defines this parabola. Okay, so number seven. <clears throat> so first of all, what you want to do is find the important points on the graph, on the graph which they kind of outline for you. So you have um, your x-intercept there is at which is also your vertex, so we could say vertex slash x-intercept is going to be equal to, uh, to negative 2 comma 0. And then the other point that they give you is the y-intercept, which is 0 comma 6. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is use our vertex that we know in order to solve for our a value. So we can set it up um, as y equals a times by x minus. And remember, because we only have one x-intercept, we have to use the modified version of, of how we write this. So instead of having like x minus r, x minus s, we're going to do just x minus um, the one point here, which would be negative 2. And then we're going to square that, okay? So basically we end up with a x plus 2, and we're squaring it. Now that we have that, we can start inputting a point on the graph. So we want to use our y-intercept to solve for a. So we're going to do, um, in this case, y is going to be equal to 6, equals a is our unknown that we're trying to solve for, and it's x plus 2 squared. So x is 0 at the y-intercept, 0 plus 2 squared. So we end up with 6 equals a, 0 plus 2 is 2 squared is 4. And then, of course, we have to divide away the 4. So we're going to have a being equal to 6 over 4. Oh. Sorry, I should maybe move this thing off. Actually, maybe I'll just move it right off the screen. Okay, a equals 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2, which is 1.5 if we put it as a decimal. Okay, so now that we have our a value, we can... Um, let me just see here, what did they actually want for the answer here? determine the quadratic function that defines this parabola. Um, okay, so now we have everything we need for that, so we can just fill in with our a value, and we already have our um, function here, which was, where did I have that here? So now we can just put those two things together. So we can say y equals a, which is 1.5, times by x plus 2 squared. And that would be our final answer for that one. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Your next question was 8. So that's going to be right here. Which pair of points are symmetric points for the parabola defined by y equals x squared minus 5x plus 7? 
So we're looking for symmetric points on the parabola, which are probably going to be our x-intercepts, right? Because we know that that's a nice set of symmetric points that are easy to find on the graph. So um, basically what we want to do is y equals x squared minus 5x plus 7 is what we're working with here. And, I mean, you could technically do trial and error and see if you put those values in, if they um, would come up with your value. For me, what I did is, um, or sorry, not if they come up with you, but if they would be true when you plug them in. The I What I thought was simpler was to just start looking at trying to find points by factoring this out a little bit. So I couldn't find two numbers that multiplied to 7 and added to 5. So instead, I decided to again factor my x out of the first two terms. So I have x times by. If I take x out of x squared, I have x. And if I take x out of 5x, I just have 5. And then I still have the plus 7 there. Okay, so now again, I can know that if I want to set this equal to zero, I'm going to have, I could have this first x being a zero, and then my other point on the graph will be uh, seven. So that'd be one point. And then I could also have this value add up to zero with the other number in the bracket. So that'd be five minus five would be zero. And the other point that it would match up with would be the y value 7. So here I have two points on the graph, um, 0, 7, and 5, 7. And if we look at our possible answers, there are a bunch of different variations of that with positives and negatives, but the only one that has the same as we have is D. Okay, and that's the correct answer. Um, okay, let's see, number 9. A quadratic function has a vertex 2, negative 8, and one of its x-intercepts is negative 2. Um, which of these could be the factored form of the function? So looking at the answers, we just need to come up with kind of the first step um, of determining the function. So let's go through and start doing that. So we have a vertex of 2 and negative 8. And what I like to do with these, actually, I'm just going to move to a clean piece of paper here. What I like to do with these questions is kind of sketch out my graph if I'm given points on it, because then I can start to visualize what's going on. So uh, let's see, we have 2 from the x value and negative 8. So I'm going to have to go down. One of its x-intercepts is negative 2. OK, so I'm going to go kind of like this. Okay, so I have negative 8, let's say maybe here, 1, 2, okay, so this is going to be my 2, negative 8, and that is my vertex, so basically I also know then that I have my, oops, I didn't quite line that up properly, <laughs> let's call this one 1, and this one 2, x equals 2. Okay, so that's my vertex, and one of its x-intercepts is at negative 2. Okay, so that means we're going to have, if this is 0, we're going to have negative 1, negative 2, and there's going to be an x-intercept here, so negative 2, comma 0. And we want to figure out the factored form. So we know that if we want to figure out the factored form, it would be good for us to know the other x-intercept. And so because we already know one and we know the axis um, of symmetry, we can figure out what the other one is because it'll have to be an equal distant distance to the other side, right? So basically from this x-intercept, we have one, two, three, four, um, a difference of 4 to get to the axis of symmetry, so that means we're going to have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the other side for the other x-intercept for it to be symmetrical. So that point would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma 0 on the graph. Okay, and so now we can see that our graph is going to kind of go like that. Again, not a very nice graph, but whatever. Okay, so that's kind of what our graph is going to look like. Now we have our two x-intercepts, so we can set up our function to be y equals a, um, and then remember it's going to be x minus the two different x-intercepts because we have more than one x-intercept, so it's going to be x minus negative 2, which is actually x plus 2. 
and x minus 6, which just stays as x minus 6. Okay. Um, now that we have this basic form, we can use another point on the graph to solve for a. So the only other point we have is the vertex. So we can plug in those values for x and y. Okay. So our y value is negative 8, and a is our unknown, and x is 2. 2 minus 6. Okay, so just filling it in for the x values there. So we end up with negative 8 equals a. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. And so we're going to end up with negative 8 equals a times by 4 times 4 is going to be negative 16. And then we just want to divide away to solve for a. So we're going to have um, negative 8 over negative 16 equals a. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 8 over 16 is 1 half. So a is going to equal a half, and so our factored form is then going to be, if we just plug in a here, y equals 1 half x plus 2 x minus 6. Okay, so let's have a look at what they have listed as options here. They only have one with a half, x minus 6, x plus 2. So that was our answer. So you would choose B for that one. Okay. Um, let me see here. I think you had a couple more questions. You had number 10 and then 6B. Okay, so with 10 we have a quadratic function defines a parabola with the vertex at 1, 18. So again, we're given the vertex similar to the previous question. And we're given a zero of the function. So this is basically the exact same setup as the question we just did, because we need to determine the other zero and then write the equation in factored form. So let's go through and do that. So we have number 10. Um, the vertex was 1, 18 vertex, and we have a 0 at uh, when x equals 4, y equals 0. Okay, so that's an x-intercept. Okay, and then we want to determine the other zero first. Okay, so for part A, we want to figure out what is the other x-intercept. So this is where, again, personally, I would draw it out. So our vertex is at 1x18y, so it's going to be kind of high up. So I might kind of go like this. So we're at 1 on the x-intercept and 18 here. So let's just call the highest point here 18, 1 comma 18. Then we also have one x-intercept is going to be at 4, 0, so 4 on the x-axis. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's going to be an x-intercept here, 4, 0. And so basically, if this is our vertex and this is our um, one of our x-intercepts, we know that the other side will have to go down the opposite way. And so... This is our x equals 1, our axis of symmetry. So from the axis of symmetry to the 0 that we know, it's 1, 2, 3 points. So we have to go 1, 2, 3 points the other way. So we're at negative 2, comma 0 for this x-intercept. Okay. Um, So that was it, I think, for part A, is just they wanted the other 0, negative 2 comma 0, yeah. So we have our answer there for part A, and then for part B, they want us to write the factored form. So again, we're just going to have y equals, and this is nice and easy because there's two separate ones, so it's going to be a x minus the first one, so minus negative 2 is going to be x plus 2, and then x minus the second one, which is going to be... 4, so it stays as a negative, and then we need to solve for our a value by substituting in our vertex values. So the y value at the vertex is 18, and equals a, our x value is 1 plus 2, 1 minus 4, 18 equals a, 3 
1 minus 4 is negative 3, so we're going to have 18 equals negative 9a. So again, we want to divide out the negative 9, so we're going to have a equals 18 over negative 9, which is going to be, because there's only one negative, it'll be a negative total. 18 divided by 9 is 2, so our a value is negative 2. So to write our factored form, we would say y equals negative 2x plus 2x minus 4. Okay, and that should be our final answer for 10. Okay, and then the last one you had a question about was 6b. So let's go back to that one really quickly. So in this one, we have a quadratic function. f of x defines a parabola with x-intercepts x equals 2 and x equals 6, and a y-intercept at 0, 6. And so we want to write the function in standard form. So um, let's just have a look here. Yeah. OK. Okay, so basically what we're going to have is y equals, um, we're told that we have x-intercepts, x equals 2. Oh, I should have actually written that out first. Okay, so our x-intercepts are 2, 0, and 6, 0. And then we also have a y-intercept at... Okay, so x, ooh, I should write in x-intercepts, and then y-intercepts would be 0, 6. Okay, and then we just want to write the function. Okay, so again, we have two x-intercepts here, so we can start out by saying y equals a um, x and then this is a positive 2, so it's just going to be minus 2. And this is a positive 6, so it's going to be x minus 6. And now that we have our basic form, we can plug in another value on the graph, which in this case is the y-intercept, and solve for that. So y is equal to 6 equals a, and x is 0 minus 2, 0 minus 6. So 6 equals a times by negative 2 times by negative 6. Negative times by negative gives us positive 12a. So if we want to divide out the 12, that's going to cancel out, and we're left with a equals positive a half. Okay. So now we want to put this back to our original form. So y equals a, we now know, is positive 1 half. And then we have x minus 2, x minus 6. And then in order to write it, because they wanted it in standard form, so now we just need to um, expand it and simplify. So um, if we multiply out our brackets, we're going to have y equals 1 half x times x is x squared, x times negative 6 is negative 6x, x x times negative 2 is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. And then we just want to simplify by combining like terms. So 1 half x squared negative 6 minus 2 gives us minus 8x plus 12. And um, I think that they left it as that in the answer key. Six. Uh, let me see here. 6b, 1 half x squared minus... Oh, no, they wanted you to go one step further. Okay, so we want to undo just the fact that this is outside of the brackets. We want to make it just one complete. So we're going to do half times a half x, or sorry, a half times x squared, which is a half x squared, half times by negative 8, which is negative 4x, and a half times by positive 12, which is positive 6. And so there's our final fully factored form. Okay? So that's the answers to all the questions you sent me. Hopefully that helps you um, helps you out with these kinds of questions and let me know if you need any more help.